let me advance you. You know, you, you describe, uh, you know, a, a great pride and in, in love for your high school and something that you really grew into during that entire experience. And so um, a disqualification at the state meet would be something that would be disappointing to anybody, but I'm sure somebody that was filled with pride and really wanting to get out there and represent his school for the first time. And uh, you had earned your way into the championship final, right? So some disappointment here and a setback that we can talk about here because I'm sure with every setback that I've talked about with guys, it always builds, it always helps shape. So tell me about what happened for you your freshman year and your memories of the state meet. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so kind of like I said, that freshman year was really the first year that, um, you know, we were so close as a team and, you know, competing for your high school and, um, you know, the same 20 guys training with every day um, really kind of built up a lot of sense of pride and you're doing this for something that's bigger than yourself. And um, that's, you know, what I loved most about swimming throughout my career. And so kind of coming in with some pretty high expectations at that state meet, um, I remember we kind of had a rough prelims day. I think um, we got like ninth in a couple events and um, had some guys like slip off the starting block or something like that. And just kind of things weren't really going our way. Um, and so I was, you know, really excited for the 100 back because I was, you know, seated to do pretty well and um, felt like I could kind of help change the momentum going into the um, last couple of events on that prelims day. And um, I just remember getting in the water and uh, they said, take your marks and kind of held us there for, you know, normal amount of time. And um, for some reason, I just went. I don't really know what was going through my mind, but um, and kind of as I was going, I heard the buzzer go off and kind of was thinking during that race, like, did I just jump early? Like, um, I don't really know what necessarily happened but sure enough I got out of the pool and told me I was disqualified and um that was definitely very disappointing um I, I think I would have been like third or fourth heading into finals um so yeah but then I had the 400 free relay about 15 minutes after that and my coach pulled me aside and um don't remember exactly what he said but something along the lines of like now is the chance to like turn it around to like um you still have a chance to get a lot of momentum going into finals and so step up and swim on this relay and um i just think the way we bounced back the rest of that meet um it just showed a lot of resiliency in our team um and i think um it just showed me going forward like you can't let one race affect the next race like every every swim is different have a bad swim just forget about it learn from it but don't let that dictate the rest of your swim meet. So I think that was kind of my big takeaway um, from that meet. That's great. And you come back your sophomore year and you're faster, significantly faster. I think you dropped close to two and a half, three more seconds in the IM. I think dipped down to like the 151 range. Um, and in that race, uh, Josh Ehrman, when, uh, I think wins the race and breaks the state record. And I want to ask you specifically about that because one of the things that I think has been interesting in as we're having this conversation about raising your expectations as you're kind of working through, um, you're not the first guy that I've spoken to who has a story similar to finishing second, third, fourth in a race where a bar is set. And they're able to intimately see that guy and see he's human. And their bar is raised in the process in terms of seeing somebody right next to him go so fast. And two, three years later, they're doing exactly that. And that's the case here. Um, I, I'm interested in your memories of the 200 IM final, you know, and being able to see Ehrman swim faster than anybody else ever had, but not faster, you know, not necessarily than you'd show that you were capable of later. But just, you know, take me inside that race and, and your memories. Yeah. Well, I think that kind of started the year before my, um, during my freshman year. Um, I don't remember what place I got, but 
I was in the A final and kind of stunning. I had you fifth as a freshman. Does that sound right? Yeah, I think that's right. Um, yeah, I remember watching the video of that race and just watching Josh Herman and David Boland. Um, and I think David Boland had like a ridiculous last 50 or something and out touched Josh. Um, and I think they both dipped under 150. And I remember thinking that that was just, you know, ridiculous. And um, I think I went like 154 or 155 or something and just like felt like that was so far off. Um, and then the next year at Holland at that sophomore year state meet, um, Josh was in that heat and Nick Arkeelian was in that heat. Um, and I remember swimming, um, it was during the breaststroke and making, I think the 125 turn and I, I saw Nick and I was like, oh, wow, I'm like kind of up there with these guys. Um, and then Nick's obviously a, an amazing back half IM swimmer. And so he blew me out of the water from that point on. But I just remember thinking like I could kind of hang with these guys for for that long. And then looking up and touching and seeing Josh's time, I was like, wow, that that kind of sets the bar like another another notch higher, like you mentioned. Um, but I think that race gave me a lot of confidence just kind of seeing that I wasn't as far off as I had thought the year before. Um, and like you said, just sets the expectations of maybe I can, I can do something similar to what Josh just did. Um, yeah. So the following year, you, you go much faster again. Like that's one of the cool things about your career is you almost have these linear steps of like two and a half, three second drops again. So here you come back as a junior and now you're a 148, right? And I think in that range and you really uh, get significantly quicker. Um, and again, you're right there as the state record falls again, uh, to, uh, but Nick grabs it. But now you're, now you're really seeing the gap that you were seeing two years earlier on tape of like, wow, I have a long way to go. Now you don't have a long way to go, and you're right there. Tell me about, you know, what's kind of going on with you and your approach to the sport as you're seeing how close you are to kind of getting over the top and, and being the man that I'm sure you're kind of craving to be. Yeah, um, that junior was a lot of fun. I remember that race against Nick like very well and just remember kind of before the race um, just thinking like there's only one way that I could potentially win this and that's just to go out as fast as I can and hope that he doesn't catch me because probably not going to stay with him on the breaststroke and freestyle um, and I remember going out pretty quick and then just seeing him just blow by me in the breaststroke and um, but I remember after that race um, just feeling like I definitely kind of uh, like definitely pushed Nick and that was kind of something that um, I hadn't really felt before um, and just seeing you know what he went and everything like that, that I mean set the expectations a little bit higher but feeling like that I like personally like helped get the best out of him um, was something that was like very rewarding for me and kind of took me uh, motivated me to go even, um, I don't know, just set the bar higher for the next year. Um, yeah, so that was, that was definitely added motivation as well. <laughs> 